Are you ready to boldly go where no one has gone before? Join us on Dark Space, the channel that explores the mysteries of the universe and the latest advancements in space technology. In this video, we're going on an out-of-this-world adventure as we explore the challenges of long-term space travel and colonization. From surviving in space and the limitations of technology to building self-sufficient colonies and the social dynamics of living in a confined space, we'll take you on a journey that will make your mind soar. Plus, by subscribing to our channel, you'll get access to exclusive content and stay up to date with the latest space news and technology. So, strap in and get ready to blast off into the cosmos with dark space. In space, no one can hear you scream, but they can hear you complain about bone loss, radiation exposure, and the loneliness that comes with being millions of miles away from Earth. Have you ever wondered how astronauts cope with the physical and mental challenges of space travel? Well, it's not all sunshine and stardust. In fact, the conditions in space can be downright cruel. For starters, there's the radiation. Cosmic rays are a constant threat to astronauts, and prolonged exposure can lead to increased cancer risk and damage to DNA. But don't worry, NASA has got it all figured out. They've developed a nifty device called the Astrorad Vest, which protects astronauts from radiation exposure. Think of it as a bulletproof vest for the space age. But radiation isn't the only challenge. The lack of gravity in space can wreak havoc on the human body, causing bone loss, muscle atrophy, and even changes to the shape of the eyeball. Yep, that's right, space can make your eyes go wonky. But don't fret, astronauts can exercise for hours every day and eat a nutrient-rich diet to help combat these effects. And let's not forget the mental strain of being cooped up in a tin can hurt them through the cosmos. Astronauts have to deal with isolation, cramped living quarters, and the constant threat of equipment failure. But hey, at least they get to see some pretty awesome views of Earth. So, the next time you complain about your job, just remember, at least you're not stuck in a tiny spacecraft hurtling through space at thousands of miles per hour. Now that we know surviving in space is hard, let's talk about why we're not colonizing it already. Spoiler alert, it's not because we're lazy. The biggest hurdle in space exploration is technology. Sure, we've come a long way since the days of Yuri Gagarin and Alan Shepard, but we're still a long way from having the technology to make space travel and colonization a reality. Take propulsion systems, for example. Our current rockets use chemical fuels, which are heavy, expensive, and don't provide enough power to get us to distant planets like Mars. We need a better, more efficient way to get around the solar system. Enter ion propulsion. This technology uses electricity to accelerate ions and create thrust, allowing spacecraft to travel faster and farther than ever before. It's like a rocket on steroids. But propulsion systems aren't the only problem. We also need life support systems that can sustain humans for long periods of time in space. And let's face it, carrying enough oxygen and water for a mission to Mars is just not feasible. So, scientists are working on developing closed-loop life support systems that recycle everything from air to urine. Yep, yeah, you heard that right. In space, even pee can be a valuable resource. But it's not all doom and gloom. There's some seriously cool research being done to improve space technology. From using 3D printing to create parts in space to developing robotic assistance to help astronauts with tasks, the future of space travel is looking pretty bright. So, while we might not be ready to colonize space just yet, the science and technology are constantly improving. Who knows, maybe one day we'll have a thriving colony on Mars, complete with space cafes and zero-gravity yoga studios. One can dream, right? Now that we've covered the challenges of surviving in space and the limitations of current technology, let's talk about the ultimate goal, building self-sufficient colonies. First things first, let's get real about the challenges of farming in space. Picture this, Martian potatoes, the key to survival in a world where there's no pizza delivery. But wait, did we forget to pack the soil? And who's gonna water the plants? Generating power is another obstacle we'll have to overcome. Solar panels might work great on Earth, but they might not be as reliable when you're millions of miles away. And nuclear reactors in space? Sure, what could possibly go wrong? Finally, recycling waste. Yes, you heard that right, recycling waste. That means we'll have to recycle everything, air, water, even our own poop. Talk about, reduce, reuse, and recycle, taken to the extreme. So, in summary, to build a self-sufficient colony, we'll need to learn how to farm without soil, generate power without relying on solar panels, and recycle everything, including our own waste. 
It's going to be a challenge, but with determination and some creativity, we might just pull it off. Now that we've discussed the challenges of building a self-sufficient colony, let's talk about the equally important human factor. Living in a confined space with the same people for years can be stressful, to say the least. And we're not just talking about the inevitable arguments over who ate the last freeze-dried ice cream. We're talking about the psychological strain of isolation, the lack of privacy, and the constant need to maintain good relationships with your fellow space travelers. So, how do we ensure that everyone gets along and stays sane in space? Well, first of all, we need to choose the right people for the job. It's not enough to just pick the smartest scientists or the most experienced astronauts. We need to choose people who can handle the stress of long-term space travel and get along with others in close quarters. But even the best of us can crack under the pressure, so we need to have systems in place to maintain good mental health. This includes things like regular counseling sessions, virtual reality simulations to reduce stress, and even virtual pets to keep astronauts company. And let's not forget about the importance of entertainment. When you're stuck in a small tin and hurtling through space, you need something to take your mind off the fact that you're hurtling through space in a small tin can. This is where things like movies, music, and video games come in. In fact, some space agencies are even looking into creating space-specific entertainment, like zero-gravity sports and space-themed board games. So, in summary, maintaining good mental health and relationships in space is just as important as building a self-sufficient colony. By selecting the right people, providing psychological support, and ensuring that there are plenty of ways to stay entertained, we can make sure that the human factor doesn't become the weakest link in our space exploration efforts. Welcome to the most politically charged section of our video. Yes, we're talking about politics in space, and no, we're not going to bore you with a bunch of bureaucratic jargon. Instead, we're going to explore the juicy and controversial side of space politics. Firstly, let's talk about sovereignty. Who owns the planets? The answer isn't so simple. Technically, no one can own a planet, but some countries have staked their claim on certain areas of the moon or Mars. Imagine Elon Musk putting up a, no trespassing, sign on a section of Mars. We can already see the intergalactic property disputes that will arise. Next, let's address the elephant in the room, resource management. We all know that Earth has limited resources, so what happens when we start exploiting the resources of other planets? Will we have to share them equally or will the strongest power dominate? It's like a space version of the Hunger Games. And finally, we can't forget about the environmental impact of colonization. Sure, we can build self-sustaining colonies, but what if we disrupt the natural balance of the planets? We don't want to be the aliens that mess up another planet's ecosystem. These are just a few of the political and ethical considerations that come with colonizing other planets. We need international cooperation and regulation to ensure that we don't turn space exploration into a space war. But hey, who doesn't love a good space battle? In the previous section, we delved into the political and ethical considerations of colonizing other planets. Now, we're going to take it a step further and explore the idea of transforming these planets into habitable environments for humans. Yes, we're talking about terraforming, and it's one of the most exciting and ambitious ideas in space exploration. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why bother terraforming a planet when we already have a perfectly good one? But hear me out, Earth won't last forever, and it's always good to have a backup plan. Plus, think about how cool it would be to say you helped turn a barren wasteland into a paradise. But, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Terraforming is no easy feat. It involves transforming the atmosphere, climate, and even the landscape of a planet to make it suitable for human habitation. We're talking about making a planet that's currently as hospitable as the inside of a vacuum cleaner into a place where we can breathe, grow crops, and take a leisurely stroll outside without our eyeballs exploding. The technologies required to terraform a planet are still in their infancy, and it would be a massive undertaking that would require international cooperation and massive resources. Plus, there are ethical considerations to be taken into account. Who has the right to terraform a planet? Would we be destroying a unique and valuable ecosystem to make way for humans? And what if something goes wrong? Could we unintentionally create an even more dangerous planet than the one we started with? All of these are important questions to consider as we ponder the possibility of terraforming other planets. So grab your spacesuit and join us as we explore this exciting and thought-provoking topic. As we've discussed in previous sections, there are many challenges to space exploration and colonization, from surviving in the harsh environment of space to building self-sufficient colonies and managing social dynamics. 
And let's not forget the political and ethical considerations that come with claiming new territories and resources. But despite these challenges, the potential benefits of space colonization are vast. For one, it could unlock new scientific discoveries that could benefit humanity in countless ways. Just think of all the medical breakthroughs that have come from studying microgravity and radiation exposure. Space colonization could also expand the reach of human civilization and provide a safety net for the survival of our species. After all, the Earth won't be habitable forever, and we need to start thinking about long-term solutions for the survival of our species. And let's not forget about the economic opportunities that space exploration could bring. As we start to establish self-sufficient colonies on other planets, we could unlock new sources of valuable resources and create new industries that benefit humanity. But as we look to the future of space travel and colonization, we must also consider the importance of sustainability. We can't just keep launching more and more objects into space without considering the impact on our planet and our future space endeavors. So, as we wrap up our space odyssey, let's remember the challenges and the potential benefits of space exploration and colonization. Who knows what the future holds, but one thing is for sure, the final frontier is waiting for us to explore. Thanks for watching our video on surviving in space, the limitations of current technology, building self-sufficient colonies, and the social dynamics in space. Remember, the challenges of space exploration can be daunting, but the rewards are out of this world. By liking, subscribing, and sharing this video, you can help us spread the message and inspire others to support space exploration. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be able to say, I helped make humanity a multi-planetary species.